everybody, welcome to Armchair Ministry. I just want to talk today about pointing people in the right direction. You know, not pointing people about uh, uh, famous people or, or things like that, but pointing people to the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. You know, as the Bible says, we are living epistles, seen and read of all men. The reading today started off at... Uh, Verse John chapter 3, verse 25. And this is what it says. It says, There arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John <clears throat> and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, bearest witness, hallelujah, think about that, behold, the same baptizeth, uh, and and come to, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive uh, nothing except it be given to him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I am, I am sent before him. So he was a forerunner, wasn't he? It became the spirit of Elijah. So he was in the right place. He was doing the right thing, what the Lord wanted him to do was to point them to Jesus. And the crypts today is in the right place, not to say, to point them to the church, but that point them to Jesus. You know, tell them about what Jesus did. He died on the cross. He rose again. He forgiven us our sins and set us free and we can be born again of the Spirit of God. That's the message of the Gospel. Hallelujah. That's the message of the Gospel. And then further on, it says, He that cometh from above is above all. And he that is of the earth is earthly. And speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And again he says, He that hath, keeps saying he, <laughs> it's a personal thing, isn't it? And he that received his testament has set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God hath sent speak of the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth in him. So, really think that, that John just came baptizing. No, there's a lot of truth there, isn't there? Massive amount of truth. He's shown us where we are, and what the Lord came to do. And we are to tell, verse 36... Uh, what the Lord has come to do. And our Christian life is what it says, a Christian life. It's Christ in our lives. It's God in our lives. The God who rules the universe. We're born again of the Spirit of God in our lives and we've been set free from sin and we have a message to take to people and our message is a testimony what we what has happened to us. That's if it's happened to us. A few uh, weeks ago, or months ago, I... I met this guy who used to come to the church I went to and uh, they'd gone for some reason and they bought the church building about five or six miles away and taken a few people with them and uh, he had a, actually gave, he told me a tremendous testimony of what God had done for him, not in his life but in a physical thing which we speak, spoke about the other week, a tremendous, uh, so anyway I met him and I said to him, I said, uh, how you going on, and this and the other, and, and the language he came out was atrocious, you know, uh, it was foul language, and uh, I said to him, uh, I said, oh, I said, oh, you got that church up there, yes, uh, who's your minister, oh, we don't have a minister, we just have somebody in every so often, so you see what I'm trying to say, is he's heading in the wrong direction, they thought they had something better than what was happening at the church they were in. Of course, they were proved very wrong because really what they did, they took their hand, the, the eye off the ball and they're looking at them instead of looking what the Lord wants for their lives and in their lives, we say that, for, for in their lives, for their lives and with their lives. You see, they hadn't even reached that position and we spoke last week about uh, the six things which God wanted to us to do. One was to obviously see the light, be born again. The second one was to be separated. And obviously they were not separated from the things of this world, were they? And of course they never got to where the Lord wanted them to be 
even though uh, they thought they were they they knew better than anybody else but they don't know better than this book hallelujah and the bible says obey them and have the rule over you but the lord is our mentor he shows us how it's to done that we sit living epistles seen and read of all men that he shows us how to go about it and this in in john chapter 4 don't forget uh that uh John has said to uh, John and Andrew, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And they followed Jesus, and they stopped a while with him. And he, of course, what well, uh, John told James, I think, and Andrew told Peter. So what they were doing, they were passing on what they had received from John, and they found out for themselves, because they had a, a talk to the Lord, and he showed them what... Uh, he told them, probably, I don't know what he told them, wasn't there. So what I'm trying to say, he must have told them something was interesting because they went and told the brothers. Hallelujah, the first people you talked to. And this is here in John chapter 4, you know it's about uh, here, Jesus went from, from this place uh, uh, about, so he would not get entangled in doctrine. Because he says, he says, uh, there was a question between some of John's disciples about purifying, and, and, and this is what he was. And said, Therefore the Lord knew, in verse chapter 4, that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples. He left Judea and departed into Galilee. Of course, you know the story. It's he goes into Samaria and he has to go through Samaria. And uh, it, it, what it is, he sits on a well. Now, Samaria in the Bible, there was a ten tribe and the two tribes, and they were split up. God's, God said to, that he would split these tribes up, because, but he would leave one tribe to uh, Solomon's son, right? And the other time was Jerobo, uh, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. He says, nobody made him Israel to sin more than him. And what he did, he made these two cars, one in Bethel, and uh, and one in Dan, and these be thy gods which brought thee out of, out of Egypt. It's just a bit like uh, uh, Aaron, wasn't it, you know? And today, what they do, they go to the wailing wall, don't they, and put letters in and nod their heads and pray for, they're praying for something just as dead as those things. But we, we preach the gospel about a living God, one who can help you and bless you and do you good. So, he departed again into Galilee. So what it was, he was taking the message of the gospel, you know, where, where we would say these were Jews. Now, Jesus hadn't been preaching long, in probably a couple of three months, because he, he changed the water into wine in Cana. And, uh, and, 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 and what it, it was, the fact that it, 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 what, how he was going about things, it probably basically in situations, was a learning curve anyway. So he's not a getting involved in doctrinal issues at the beginning, like we do. Someone said to me, well, we got this guy said, we put him through this course and put him through that course. And eventually they decided he was not saved. I don't believe in that. I believe that we accept the sincere, simple work of the uh, milk of the word that we may grow thereby. You don't give a child, do you? A bacon butty or a hamburger do you give it the milk and sometimes we're trying to get something into their head instead of feeding them with the things which they may grow thereby that may prosper in the things of god i'm sure you've seen the message so he went to samaria and it seems like he's, got, he's jumping from the frying pan into the fire he doesn't go into just into samaria he goes in and he goes and sits on a well you see the the woman who came to him at the well but what it is here, he's come in and he's led this place and it's what he does, he sends his disciples away because he wants to have a personal, uh, as it were, conversation with this person. And what it is sometimes in our Christian life, we say, you know, it, this, we'll listen to what's happening here and we'll really think, we'll take it on board that sometimes we're trying to run before we can walk uh, in explaining the gospel to people's lives and the, and it's because he sits down on the well because he was tired now he's been going from six o'clock in the morning and it's probably 12 o'clock is what it says now 
and this place is 30 miles, he's gone away so he won't cause controversy because that's not what he came to do. He came to make things clear what he had come to do and how he had to minister to people's lives and help them. So a lady from, um, from Samaria comes, he was sat there, he was tired and it, she comes and he, he asks for a, a drink of water, doesn't he? What a simple thing where to explain, uh, go on with things. He didn't go to and say this, that, or the other. He just for, asked for a simple uh, drink of water. And then cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. You know, and he wanted, he just, that's what he said to her. So it's not really any, anything. What I believe is sometimes we start on things and we're trying to lead things to, through to people. You know, just say, the fact that your testimony, that's what it's all about, is your testimony sometimes. But Jesus simplifies it and asks for uh, a drink of water. Give me to drink. But his disciples were gone, it says. What he'd done, he got rid of these lot. Because the point is, he's trying to teach them a tremendous uh, uh, truth. And that tremendous truth is the gospel is for the whosoever. And they thought, you know, the fact that when they came later on, uh, she, they uh, what, what it is, the, the surprise is talking to this lady. But you see, it's the whosoever. But they didn't understand this because they just basically, like Jesus, been on the road not very long. And the disciples were gone away into the city to buy me. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it thou, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria for Jews? have no dealings with Samaritan. Now this had been going on for 2,400 years. So when it, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, he, he said nobody made Israel to sin, but like these two, he made these two calves. They've been carrying this situation, which have been, as, as you said, is blinding their eyes to the truth of the gospel, of which we preach. And sometimes we can do that. We can get, into a doctrinal issue and we carry it on and carry it on and carry it on and we don't really get down to the nitty gritty which is the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ the simplicity of the things of God because God is simple but God is simply profound but profoundly simple he does not complicate matters and this is why he's gone away from the situation and he's gone 30 or 40 miles out of his way to talk to this lady uh, about the things of God and of course he says what does he say ask of me a drink of me which I'm woman of Samaria because Jews have no dealings with Samaritans uh, you know we don't, we don't, Jew, it's not this, she's not got any problem it's the Jews who have the problem with the Samaritans you see for what they've done 2400 years ago and sometimes we we carry these, uh, as she said, burdens, don't we? All these uh, uh, situations in our life uh, for a long time, not 2,400 years, obviously, but for a long time. And we don't, it blinds us to the real truth of the gospel. As, as John says, it says, No man can receive, uh, for he whom God hath sent speak of the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. For he that hath received his testimony that God has set to a seal that God is true. So what it is, it's the simplicity of all this stuff. It's God is true. No man can receive nothing unless it is given to him from heaven. And sometimes we've got to, when we've got it from heaven, we want to give it to other people, don't we? Because it sets people free. And, and this is what the old plan of this. And he sits down and he asks for a drink. And she says, doctrinally, again, that uh, Jews have no dealings with Samaritans like her. She had the two worst things once she was a woman and the other one, the fact she was a woman of Samaria. And Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest this gift of God and who it is that saith unto thee, Give me to drink, then thou was asked, asked him and he would have given thee living water. So what it is, He's not after, you know, he's, she, he's, he's just after a drink. And he, he's, she said, you haven't got anything to, to get the well. The well's deep. And sometimes the things of doctrinal issues 
or deep. They can't be explained properly to people on, in, the, in their lives. Instead of having the simplicity of what God wants to do to you, he wants to give you living water. Hallelujah. Oh, that was a mouthful. But he wants to give you living water. He wants you to take to the simplicity of the message of the gospel. As, as John said, no man can receive anything unless it is given to him from heaven. Have you got it from heaven or have you got it from issues in the Bible which you have taught, you know, probably brought up in certain religions or whatever and you become a Christian and these things are bogging you down all the time. You've not been released to the things of the living God, that God is alive and God wants to help you and bless you and God wants to bring the truth through your life to the people as Jesus was going to bring the truth to this woman and how is he going to do it? The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with and the well is deep from whence art thou this living water. Hallelujah. Uh, art thou greater than our father Jacob which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children all and all his cattle. So what I'm trying to say is she knew a bit about things, didn't she? She didn't, she wasn't like a, <laughs> you know, people sometimes don't think uh, the best people I've been brought up with as a Christian were older people, because this woman was an older, she'd been married five times, for goodness sake, and if you watch The Chosen, which I've watched on, only once on the television, uh, it was a young person. She'd had five husbands, for goodness sake, uh, unless she had them, you know, one, one year, two, three, four, five, you know, it, it's anything like that. But what it is here, the, is she's not a young lady, but she had, she was an oldest lady, and she had truth, and she kept truth, but it was the wrong truth. Hallelujah. And uh, what did he say here? Great Jesus answered, said unto, Whosoever drinketh of the water shall thirst again. Hallelujah. For whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him, hallelujah, shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be uh, in him, in him, hallelujah, and a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So he's giving her the real stuff, isn't he? He's not giving the water of doctrinal issues, of things you can't really get down to, things you cannot really understand, but he's giving you living water, which is in your life and shall flow out through your life and bless other people. I'm telling you something, that's what I want to do. I don't want to complicate the gospel. I don't want to add Jesus when he walked away from controversy, didn't he? Uh, but he won't see, he, so he will be clear in what he had done that he received something from heaven and he wanted to give it to other people. Why have you stopped giving it to other people? Because it's become an argumentative gospel instead of a reality in your life, which is a real life that instead of having that uh, water of what we just talked about, but having that well of water which springs up into an everlasting life because that's what we really want about the woman said unto him sir we used to say you know one he was a he was a a man then he was a prophet and and then he, he was a savior but you know he says here he says the woman said unto him so give me this water that i thirst not now they come hither to draw so she wanted something which was real she didn't want something which was of religion because she knew enough where she goes on if you in later on she knew enough about religion our fathers worshipped in this uh, in this mountain and you say in jerusalem is a place where we ought to worship and, and what he says here jesus said unto her, go call thy husband and come hither so he says and then he says woman answers that i have no husband jesus said unto her, thou hast well said i have no husband for thou hast had five husbands and he whom thou hast now is not thy husband is that thou as said. So what it is, the Lord's given her what's called a word of knowledge, isn't it? You know, he's giving her something which only possibly maybe he knows, you know. She's had five husbands, so we're not going to that anymore. And she then she gets on it again more, says our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and he said that in Jerusalem is the place where you ought to worship. So really, is what I mean again. It's, they say it's Jerusalem, and you, we are saying it's here. It's these cards which we have had, but they've long got, probably long gone. But in this mountain here where these cards were, is a place where we ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, 
that the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem uh, uh, worship the Father. They said, the, the worship ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. We've got something which is tangible. You have not got something which is tangible because we believe in a living God and you believe in two cars long gone but you worship in this mountain and we believe that salvation, he says, worship the Father uh, is spirit and truth for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So what is she doing? She's realising it's not about effort going to draw water and you can worship God in spirit and in truth in, in your own home. You don't have to go into church or anything like that. You, well, it's nice to be fellowship with each other, but you can do it in, in, in your car going to work. You can do it when you just sat on the bus. You can worship God in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah is cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Hallelujah. So she's going on again. She knows a bit about things, doesn't she? And sometimes knowing a bit about things of the Bible and not knowing the most tangible thing who Jesus says, it can lose you by a million miles in your life. Jesus said unto her, I that speaketh unto thee, am him and he. So what it is, it's what he's doing. He's putting the, as you said, putting the truth into her life. I am this I am the person you've been just been coming about. I am the Messiah. I am the Christ. And and that's what it's all about. So he's telling her the truth of the gospel. Hallelujah. Don't mince about. You know, tell them what, what they need. You know, that they know Jesus. You know your religion. It won't get you anywhere but a relationship with Holy God will. Uh why talk and of course his his disciples come and marvel it said why he spoke to us him saying They've not, they've not been on the way too long, and they're not. He's teaching them a tremendous truth that the gospel is to the whosoever. It's not just like to the Jews, but he's just come 30 or 40 miles away out of his way to speak to a woman of Samaria, a woman who's had five husbands, but a woman who knows about religion, and but it, she does not know about the reality of a living God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Comes and so she went away, it says, and come see a man which told me all things that ever did. Is this not the Christ? Hallelujah. Because she's, she's watching, she's, she's understood. He's told me all the things. He's opened my heart and he's told me the fact that what is, what I am, really, but he's not condemned me. Hallelujah. He's not condemned me at all. And uh, then they, they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, something, he says, I have said unto them, I have, I have meat to eat that ye know not what. So what it was, he was saying it was the gospel. The thing what he was doing, it was the gospel, what she, he said, I have meat to know, to eat what you know not of. And sometimes we've got to find our priorities right in our Christian life, in what we're doing. You know, this is important, that's important, that's important, that, and then just in a little bit, there's a little slot for God. You know, God doesn't work in slots. He works in our lives and through that, or it said, uh, that flowing river of water through our Christian life. And if you sometimes, you know, now today it's not happening, you've got to examine yourself. Hallelujah. Not everybody else. Don't look at him. Like I said about that person earlier on, because if you follow people like that, you will not get anywhere whatsoever. Therefore said the disciple unto him, as any man brought him to eat, of course he was, he was talking about the things of God, the word of God, the, you know, the word of God which is, uh, is, 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 is in our lives that we can give to other people, they might go, Jesus said unto my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. <coughs> so the most important thing is to finish the work what God has to do. And of course he went here, say not there are yet four months then cometh the harvest, bold I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white unto harvest. So really, it's not a time, it's always a time. It's not just a special time, it's always a time. He that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit into eternal, uh, into life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. 
and, and here it is a saying to him, one source, another reaper, I sent you to reap that wherein ye be bestowed no labour, other men labour and ye are entered into their labours. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a partnership, isn't it, in our, our Christian life? We're doing one and they're doing the other, or we're doing this and they're doing, we're doing, we're sowing and there's some, somebody is reaping. So when the Samaritans were come unto them, excuse me, I have to drink of water. It says, when the, um, the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry them, and he abode them, abode with them two days. And many more believed because of his own word, and said unto the woman, No, we believe not because thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed a Christ, the Saviour of the world. Now, after these two days, he departed and went in to Galilee. So what he's done is completed what the Lord wants him to do in this situation. He's got away from one place and to another. And you know, the Bible says if you've got to carry the dust off your feet, if you don't want, you're going to somewhere else. But he did and he succeeded. And, other <coughs> and of course, the people of her word, she had a testimony, but the Lord gave her I say, not a Bible study, but he told her who he was. And sometimes we're going to tell people who Jesus is. Thank you for listening today. God bless you and help you in your lives every day. Amen.